Okay, in my previous video, we showed how to build and tune these 20 and 30 meter traps uh, from N7KOM uh, in the effort to build a trapped and fed half wave for 40, 20, and 30 meters. So today is the build day. So here we've got everything in place. We've got our wire. We've got a tape measure to, tape, to measure the wire off. Obviously the analyzer to measure things. And I've got two different uh, onions that I'm going to try. Uh, the spark plug gear one that I have and then a homebrew one. And I did a little prep work on the traps themselves. So on the traps, you can really tell if it focuses is in here, I attached a small piece of solid core wire that I routed through the uh, strain relief holes and then soldered onto the pad on the board. And the idea is I'm going to use this in the tuning process. I'll use my flexible antenna wire and feed it through the strain relief holes and just use these little wire nuts to connect it up to the wire. I'll do that and trim the antenna until I get it tuned and then when I have it all done, I can just solder everything up without having to solder and unsolder things during the tuning process. And through emails and all, I, uh, I pulled Vince and a couple of other folks in terms of what lengths they had used on their uh, versions of the antenna. Uh, so I'm going to cut my wire longer. Uh, I'll probably start with 33 to 34 feet or so for the 20 meter section and then probably something in the neighborhood of about 6 feet or a little more for the middle section and then probably about 8 or 9 feet for the end section and uh, we'll start with that and trim each of those back to bring each of the bands into resonance. Now the theory is uh, we start with the 20 meter section here. The trap should block everything on the other side of it so that we can just start with just making the 20 meter section. But the reality is we all know that everything matters when it comes to antennas. So I'm going to start with all of the lengths attached, figuring that any interaction that we have from the length beyond the trap is secondary but still important. So even though that length will be likely too long when I start with tuning the 20 meter trap, it's still going to be better than not having it having anything there at all. Now since I'm going to have to be raising and lowering the antenna a lot, I'm going to use my spider beam uh, 40 foot long uh, telescoping mast and I'll just probably uh, zip tie it or um, bungee cord it to the back fence back there uh, to raise and lower the antenna quickly while I'm doing the tuning process. Okay, so the first step is let's uh, start measuring off some lengths of wire with my 100 foot tape. Okay, so here's my wire lengths. There's the approximate uh, 30, 34 to 35 foot length for the 20 meter section. And this is the 6 foot length that I'll stick between the 20 and 30 meter traps. And then the 8 foot section that will start at the far end for uh, completing the 40 meters. So I'm just going to prep the ends and attach everything up. And we'll get it in the air and see where we are. Well, it turns out my wire nuts, even though they're pretty small, are still too big to grab the ends of these wires uh, to, to temporarily put them in place. So I just made the wires a little extra long and put a lot of twist on them. And for my tuning purposes, they'll hold together just fine. Well, it's almost impossible to get rid of the uh, glare, as I can find out here, even though it's a very overcast day. But uh, what I can read here is the minimum SWR is at about 12 megahertz. So it's about 2 megahertz uh, on the low side. I expected that. So we'll cut the antenna and trim it. And I'll just do that iteratively until I get inside the uh, low portion of the 20 meter band. Okay, again, tough to see with the glare here. But uh, I got it below 1.5 to 1 on the low portion of the band. It's still resonant well below the 20 meter band, but I'm gonna start here and trim the other sections just in case those other trims tend to bring this resonant point up. Okay, on the 30 meter side, uh, our low point is about uh, 9.835 uh, megahertz. So I wanna bring that up. So I'll start shortening it up to get down, you know, reasonably close to the 30 meter band. Let's see, it looks like we got 30 meters dialed in here. Uh, it's below 1.5 on the lower portion of the band. Let's see where we are on 40. Well, it looks like the dip isn't quite as deep. It's uh, below 2 to 1 on the lower portion of the 40 meter band. And that's probably about as good as I'm going to get. So uh, I might just leave it like that. Let's uh, get it all uh, soldered up and put some heat shrink on it. We should be good to go. 
Okay, to help with the glare problem, I saved the data off. So there's my 40 meter data after it's fully assembled, uh, perfectly centered there on the CW portion of the band. And let's load up my 30 meter results. And there's 30 meters. It's not perfect, but hey, it's below uh, 1.5 to 1 across the entire band, so I can't complain about that. And let's take a look at 20 meter band. And there's a 20 meter band and well under 1.5 over the entire band. So I'm real happy with the way this turned out from a matching standpoint, which means I don't necessarily have to use a tuner. Of course, the proof is in the pudding. Let's go see how it works outside. All right, let's see if the reverse beacon network picks me up on 20 meters. All right, looks like we've got some spots here. Again, with the glare is a problem, but look, we've got some stations out in Kansas. Uh, Looks like uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, out near Milwaukee, Wisconsin, down near uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So uh, you know, distances ranging from uh, 491 miles to 1,075 miles. Not too bad with 5 watts and a uh, wire antenna. Let's see how we look on the other two bands. Okay, not so sure what the bands are doing here today, but uh, we did get a couple of spots on 30 meters also. Uh, let's see, one 240 miles away, uh, up in, looks like, uh, New Hampshire. And the other one up in, uh, looks like up in Ottawa, in Canada, at uh, 418 miles. So, it's working on 30 meters. Let's check uh, 40. Alright, so I did get a bunch more spots here on 40. Uh, all uh, kind of up in the uh, northeast here, from Ohio up into Ontario, and up into New England. So look at the overall lengths I wound up with here. So 30, 30 feet, two and a half inches right to the ballon coil for the first section from the unin up to the 20 meter trap. Okay, now for the section between the 20 meter trap down there and the 30 meter trap here, four foot, seven and a half inches up to the trap. And then the top section from the 30 meter trap out to the loop that I hang the antenna from, eight feet, uh, five and three quarter inches to the end of the loop. Well, there's my results with the uh, trapped 20, 30, and 40 meter end fed using the N7KOM traps and the spark plug gear unin. Uh, looks like I had pretty good results on several bands. Uh, again, not sure what the propagation is doing today but uh, actually worked well enough to prove to me that the antenna is tuned well. Now, the lengths that I measured, uh, that's for my antenna. Keep in mind that when you build your antenna, the lengths will likely vary because they're going to depend on all kinds of things. The particular unin you're using, even the, the type of wire you're using, how you've wound the coils, how you've made the solder connections. So always start with them long and trim them back. I did find that after I trimmed back the center section, you know, for the, between the two traps and the final section, that the 20 meter resonant point moved up slightly in frequency. I tuned it to be kind of resonant just below the 20 meter band. And when I was all done, the resonant point had moved to right about the middle of the CW portion, which is perfect for me. So I got less than the 1.5 to one on the lower portion of those three bands, which is perfect. Now, if you liked the video, uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, again, there's a link down below to the previous video where I had made uh, and showed how to build and tune the traps. Uh, again, thanks again always for watching, and we'll see you next time, or we'll catch you on the air.